A very good afternoon to everybody. Uh, Mr. Alavat has joined. Dinesh is there. Narendra is there. And Sai is also there. And uh, I think Ma'am will also join. Uh, a very good afternoon to everybody. Good afternoon, Ma'am. So, starting with today's lecture. Should I wait? Uh, Nita is not there. Hello, Michael. Michael is here. How are you, Michael? Sound is okay? Please type okay. I think ma'am has also joined. Good afternoon, ma'am. So, uh, today, who is remaining? Neeta is not there. Neeta, are you there? If there, please mark your attendance. So, it's 12 now. I'll start uh, with today's lecture. Today, I'll be dealing with energy. So up till now we have talked about work power but without energy everything is zero you need to have energy to do work so in this lecture i'll be focusing on energy all principles different forms and the relation with the work so these are three parts and this will conclude your section a today so starting with energy so there are many kinds of energies in this universe so here we'll be dealing with only biomechanical energy or mechanical energy so energy is defined as a ability as an ability of a subject or a person to do work you can also say that it is a capacity of a body to do work okay so there are many kinds of energies acoustic energy light energy you can see on the screen and the second point i have mentioned there are many types of energies so one thing you always keep in mind that energy cannot be created and it cannot be destroyed now to energy ko bana sakte hain na aap destroy kar sakte hain so what what science says and what actually happens is transfer of energy from one form to another so this is a very crucial fact you always keep in your mind okay so energy is defined as ability to do work and there are multiple types of energies we have but in biomechanics we'll be dealing with only mechanical energy and when we talk of mechanical energy it has two forms one is kinetic energy and one is potential energy here there is a very important point uh, you should always remember that when we talk of mechanical energy and if you have to write it mathematically then it is always sum of kinetic energy plus potential energy so when you have to write mathematically mechanical energy me is equal to what you should always write potential energy plus kinetic energy however both of these are types of energies kinetic energy bhi ek mechanical energy hai potential energy bhi mechanical energy hai but when we talk of mechanical energy in loan or and we want to quantify that so in that case it is sum of those so ye hamesha aapko yaad rakhna keep it in mind because it will help you to understand principles jo aage hum discuss karenge okay now what are the units of energy energy units are joule same as work and it is denoted by e okay so this is the concept main biomechanical energy kya i repeat it is a mechan it is a, it is an ability to do work or capacity of a body to do perform work and uh, in biomechanics we will be dealing with mechanical energy only and two forms are kinetic and potential and when we have to when we have to quantify mechanical energy then it is sum of kinetic energy plus potential energy okay units are joule now coming to the next sli slide i will discuss kinetic energy first hello nita nita has joined so kinetic energy is basically energy of motion a 
a body possesses is kinetic energy when it is moving when you are running when you are in motion so at that phase when you are running or when you are moving you have kinetic energy and in that instant your potential energy is zero always keep in mind because kinetic energy is always deal dealt with is always dealt with moving motion and mathematically it is called as kinetic equal to half mv square so m is mass v is the velocity so higher the velocity higher the kinetic energy is higher the mass higher the kinetic energy so they are direct it is directly proportional to mass as well as velocity and one thing you keep in mind when you are moving and you suddenly apply a brake right at in that instant what happens you v become zero and if v become zero mathematically kinetic energy will be zero because half m into v equal to zero so when you stop moving your kinetic energy becomes zero so this is the two important aspects so when you are in motion you have a kinetic energy and whenever you stop so that kinetic energy will become zero because your velocity becomes zero i think it's clear now now after this we'll do a short example of problem solving so that you can understand so uh, here you can calculate a kinetic energy of a 2 kg ball rolling with a velocity of 1 meter per second okay so what you have you have mass 2 kg you have velocity 1 meter per second so you have to apply the formula so that is you can see half mv square so half ka aage 0.5 then 2 kgs and 1 so energy aapke paas aage 1 jao 1 joule of kinetic energy when a 2 kg ball is rolling with a speed of 1 meter per second now your homework you have to calculate 2 kg ball rolling with a speed of or velocity of 3 meter per second calculate it and later on comment in the uh, bottom of the video when recording comes okay so this is the for just an understanding now i'll be moving to potential energy so what is potential energy it is energy of your position so when you stop moving and when you stop running your velocity becomes zero you stand still and when you are stand still you are not moving what you will have you will have potential energy so see yahan par you are seeing the convergence when you are running you are having kinetic energy when you stop that kinetic energy uh, becomes zeros and you will have potential energy wo conversion ho jati hai so in this way energy is transformed from one form to another in biomechanics also in anything in this universe energy ka bhi you cannot create energy you cannot destroy energy what you can do you just you can transfer it and mechanically to take advantage you can make the process efficient efficient karenge to aapka maximum transformation hoga so if the that is not efficient then you will lose energy more okay so this is the main uh, idea in biomechanics to make your energy transformations efficient in that way you can conserve your energy and increase your performance in biomechanics in our body there there are many crucial body parts which helps to do this so that you can become efficient in your movements and if you are new to the sport or if you are if you are not undergoing training then you will be trained to do that okay so these concepts i'll touch later on so abhi to we are dealing with this, uh, this basics of this energy so this is the potential energy of your position so mathematically it is equal to body weight multiplied by your height so body weight is what mass into acceleration due to gravity mg so here you can see the total uh, the final expression of potential energy pe is m into m is mass g is acceleration due to gravity and your h is height so in biomechanics uh, you will see that you cannot change uh, your weight aapka weight zyada alter nahi hoga so when you are applying this principle potential energy so what you can vary is your height right so tabhi maine isme last point mein aapko bataya in biomechanical applications the weight of a body is typically fixed usually hai na so changes in potential energy are usually based on changes in the body's height so height will in some most of the problems you will see height will alter your potential energy instead of mass so this is just a clarity ki in the biomechanical principles we mainly dealing with your uh, height one 
when we are talking about potential energy because height is a factor which will alter it otherwise principle wise mass can also alter potential energy agar mass zyada hai to potential energy will be more but in humans itni jaldi hamara mass ka variation nahi hota hai so what mainly alter is height kabhi aap upar jump kar rahe hain kabhi niche khade hain so that height matters and that will alter your potential energy so this is the this is just to make you clear that when we are doing biomechanical problems the only thing which varies in case of potential energy is height okay now moving to next a little a small problem to understand potential energy so in this problem you can see uh, what is the potential energy of 50 kg bar which is elevated to a height of 1 meter so what you have in this problem you have mass 50 kg and you have height 1 meter to which it it will be raised so potential energy kya hogi at 1 meter height so that you have to calculate very simple mgh mass is your 50 g is 9.81 meter per second square and your height is already given 1 meter so potential energy at 1 meter height will be 490.5 joules now another problem for your homework is calculate potential energy if it if the same bar is raised to 5 meters of height again you have to give the answer after this class you just comment in the below the video okay so i hope you understood what is potential energy it is very simple form it is again i repeat one summarize kinetic energy is energy of motion potential energy is energy of your position when you are running you will have zero potential energy and when you stop running you have zero kinetic energy and you will attain potential energy so they are they keep on interconvert uh, converting to one another okay now uh, coming to key concept strain energy is the third type of energy in the next slide you will see so strain energy is very important Uh, from the biomechanical point of view because this energy will help you to make your movements efficient how you will understand in a bit so before that uh, before going further i let you know what is it so by strain you mean ki aap kuch deform kar rahe hain you are exerting a force to something so that it get deformed so when an object is stretched ya aap stretching usko kheech rahe hain so when an object is stretched bent or otherwise deformed in any form it stores a particular form of potential energy so basically first point sab ko clear ho jana chahiye ki this is a type of a potential energy strain energy is a type of potential energy but the difference is it gets stored in a object jis bhi object ka deformation hoga it will get stored in that so this is the idea it will become more clear when i show you the graphics so when an object is stretched bent or otherwise deformed it stores a particular form of potential energy and that energy is known as strain energy so this special form of potential is called strain energy it is also known as elastic energy too in in many books okay so don't confuse strain energy elastic energy are same but latest terminology is strain energy so we will using we will be using strain energy only okay so in simple words it is defined as energy stored in the body due to deformation so it can be in any object jo bhi aap for example spring ko aap stretch karte hain you stretch a spring when you stretch it it will store an energy potential energy in the form of strain energy okay so strain energy is a particular form of potential energy which is stored with materials uh, which have been subjected to strain strain matlab deformation aapne jo diya usme unka dimension bhi change ho jata hai kai baar okay so what is the significance in biomechanics the main significance is this that this ener stored energy can be utilized by you to make your movements efficient why how because this potential energy has a potential to get converted into kinetic energy jo energy aapke store ho gayi hai suppose aapne spring ko stretch kiya and when you release that deformation it will again come back to that position jo iski original thi and but in that process it will release a kinetic energy stored kinetic energy will be released 
stored potential energy will be released and it will be converted into kinetic energy so that kinetic energy you can use for your movements so in the next slide by in that picture you will get to know what i am talking about please focus on the next slide on the picture see so here you can see a pole vault so what is happening in the vault pole ko kya kar rahe hain ye athlete is bending that pole so when you bend what are you doing what is doing he is he is exerting force to cause deformation he is doing deformation of this pole so when it is when it's get deformed jab ye mud gaya teda ho gaya it has stored what strain energy strain energy is what a potential a form of potential energy which gets stored when it is bending and when after some time when it release wo straight ho jayega aapka pole pole will get straighten so in, at that instant this pole will release kinetic energy and that kinetic energy will be utilized by this athlete to jump further got point so with the help of pole strain energy this athlete is able to jump because that strain energy is get converted into kinetic energy and that kinetic energy of mo movement will help athlete to go further okay so this is the idea of strain energy so in simple terms agar main aapko batau strain energy is your reserve jaise aap bank mein paise deposit karte hain aur jab zarurat hai you can utilize that in some situations right so that helps so in this way this is energy which you store uh, store uh, in your bending parts hamare body hamare body ke andar bhi aise parts hain where you can store it okay so that stored strain energy will help you to become more efficient so that will be more clear in the further slides so before going to that uh, i'll deal with uh, basically what is the mathematical equation for this so mathematically strain energy is represented by se you can see here and this is the expression of se half k x square so what is k here k is called as spring constant and x is that amount of deformation you have done <coughs> to a particular object to store that energy so in this formula k is a spring constant and x is the distance over which the material is deformed hope it is very clear strain energy mathematically is represented as half into k into x square k is a spring constant and x is the distance over which the material is deformed okay now what is spring constant what is the advantage of spring constant spring constant tells us about materials relative stiffness or ability to store energy how good material is to store that energy to jitna zyada elastic hoga itna utna easy hoga aapko deform karna simple so better the so more elastic the object is the more efficient it is to store the energy this is a simple idea to so, uska k value will be more spring constant jiska zyada hoga higher the spring constant higher is the ability in that object to store your strain energy because strain energy is directly proportional to your spring constant aur jitna zyada elastic hoga utna zyada aap deform kar payenge to utna zyada aapko x wala factor uska distance mein milega so all are both are related directly to strain energy so the objects which are highly elastic which can be deformed very well have more abilities to store energy as compared to rigid ones rigid ones are very difficult to bend right spring ko aap bahut acche se kheech sakte hain on the other hand agar wood ko aapko kheechne ko kaha jaye will it elongate no because spring constant of wood is not that good as spring spring is very easy to or elastic jo hota hai hamare pants mein you know in trousers that elastic you can extend it very easily okay so this is the idea spring constant should be high and we have body parts in our bodies which have very good spring constant and that are known as tendons tendons in our body helps to store this strain energy because they are highly elastic and one of the most efficient and strong you can say or sabse zyada use hone wala in our body is achilles tendon and most of you are athlete who run you are runners basically and for runners achilles tendon 
is very crucial so i'll discuss in detail uh, in the later slides about this how it helps you to run efficiently hope this slide is clear that i repeat what is strain energy strain energy is a type of potential energy but it gets stored it is stored potential energy so how it will be stored when deformation is initiated when deformation is caused by you for example in the pole vault athlete deforms that vault and during deformation it stores strain energy and when it go back to its original position it will release that in the form of kinetic energy so what is the significance of strain energy it is energy reserve it has ability to get converted into kinetic energy to make your movements efficient so this is the advantage of strain energy and mathematically it is equal to half k x square k is your spring constant which tell you how elastic object is how it is able to store the energy on deformation and x is the deformation in meters so hope strain energy is clear now now moving to the next slide which will let you know main applications in biomechanics so in humans uh, that i have told you pre uh, previously that tendons are the key elastic uh, components in our body which actually store but muscles have some ability too muscles also store to some extent but the key components are tendons okay so the muscle and tendons of the human body are when stretched they stores strain energy and that is released to increase the force in the subsequent contraction in simple terms what it means that one muscle is contracting it's doing work and it will store some amount of energy in the form of strain and then if another movement is there where which involves another muscle contraction and it is nearby so it will transfer that strain energy in the form of kinetic energy to other so that lesser energy uh, the second muscle require less energy and perform the same work more efficiently so though they work in coordination with the help of strain energy strain energy helps second muscle in subsequent contraction otherwise second muscle would have done a lot of work and a lot of energy would have required if strain energy is not there so with the help of this stored energy it is making the contraction of subsequent muscle very efficient okay so again i repeat the muscle and tendons of the body humidity are when stretched they store some amount of strain energy and that is released to increase the force of subsequent contraction kyunki basically who will produce force in body muscles to ek muscle ne jab contract hua it will store some amount of energy for the subsequent contraction aur jab second ki bari aayegi so it will impart that energy it will add up that kinetic energy so that वो फोर्स में उस जो सेकेंड मसल का कॉन्ट्रेक्शन है उसमें एनर्जी कम यूज हो सो दिस इज आइडिया सो दिस स्टोर एनर्जी विल गेट हेल्प सेकेंड मसल कॉन्ट्रेक्शन मसल विल गेट हेल्प फ्रॉम द प्रीवियस मसल विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस स्टोर्ड स्ट्रेन एनर्जी बहुत अच्छा एग्जाम्पल है फॉर एग्जाम्पल ड्यूरिंग ए थ्रो दिस स्टोर एनर्जी कैन कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट सिग्निफिकेंटली टू द फोर्स एंड पावर जनरेटेड सो दैट यू कैन इंक्रीज द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ योर फोर्स वेरी एफिशेंटली एंड टू इंक्रीज द विलॉसिटी ऑफ योर थ्रो okay so this is just one sport example how strain energy helps you to become more efficient now coming to tendons so tendons are what tendons are the components which actually attaches muscle to your bones right so tendons are most efficient in storing energy because they have very high spring constant muscle se bhi zyada spring constant tendons ka hota that's why i'm saying it these are the most efficient and these are they are to do this only they are the elastic components of your body and they will they have high spring constant and they will store your strain energy and longer jitna long hoga jitna bada tendon hoga utna wo efficient hoga for that because i told you before uh, the strain energy is equal to half k x square k is first thing is k that is spring constant second is x deformation to jitki zyada length hogi uski deformation zyada hogi राइट right? क्योंकि वो लेंथ में जो अल्ट्रेशन ज्यादा आएगी दैट इज अ फैक्टर सो लॉन्गर टेंडन आर इवन मोर एफिशिएंट एंड वन ऑफ द लॉन्गेस्ट टेंडन इज एक्लिस टेंडन इन आर बॉडी 
जो काफ मसल्स को नीचे हील के साथ अटैच करता है हील बोन के साथ सो आई कम टू दैट सो आई हैव गिवन यू द लास्ट पॉइंट द एक्लिस टेंडन इज पर्टिकुलर स्टोर्स एंड इट रन लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ मैकेनिकल एनर्जी एंड इट हेल्प्स इन वॉकिंग एंड रनिंग एंड मेक दीज मूवमेंट्स एफिशेंट ओके ना मूविंग टू नेक्स्ट स्लाइड विल हैव सम डिटेल अबाउट बायो मैकेनिक्स ऑफ एक्लिस टेंडन now this is actually standing you can see the white one it is a large tendon connecting the two major calf muscles kaun se muscle ko connect karta hai gastrocnemius and soleus these are the calf muscles and it connects it to the heel bone okay so achilles tendon is involved in which movement biomechanical movement plantar flexion plantar flexion you all know the movement when you uh move your uh, this foot towards the floor dorsiflexion is opposite okay so achilles tendon is involved in plantar flexion so this movement is crucial why because it is the toe of face of your foot during walking or running toe of jab aap karte hain segment mein jab when you are running in the faces the toe of face of your running or walking involves plantar flexion and this plantar flexion is done with the help of achilles tendon So what is the role of tendon? I have told you, it will make the this movement efficient, energy efficient. How I let you know. So this tendon provides both elasticity as well as shock absorbance to the foot. Now, what happens during running? This will be more clear in the next slide. How this tendon helps. So during running, when you are running, you think of your legs like springs. and these springs are your tendon basically majorly so achilles tendon is the spring in your legs so when you run you stretch those springs uh, in particular that that's achilles tendon and to lesser extent to the arc sometimes there are in some books arcs also plays some similar kind of role arc kya hota hai aapke foot ke niche jo c shape hai na aata that is known as arc in some books uh, it is also written that arcs also play that role it is true also it plays to some extent but the major role is played by this achilles tendon okay so think of your legs like spring and this spring is your achilles tendon and when you are running stretch when you when you are when you are running you stretch your these springs so when you stretch them they get deformed and they will store strain energy so this stored stored strain energy is then released to power your next stride so this will give that energy in your next stride so that your next strides become more efficient again you will uh, work again you will run again you will make them stretch so this cycle goes on the stored strain energy then released to power your next stride and the spring snack backs to its original position releasing kinetic energy the next graphic will make it more clear so this way this cycle moves on you stretch the spring and you release the spring so when it is stretch it stores the energy and when it is released it uh, it again give uh, when it, it when it recoils it again give back energy in the form of kinetic energy so see this graphic when you are running you have kinetic energy because kinetic energy is energy of your motion right so in that when you are here you are doing flexion you are stretching this spring this is basically achilles tendon so when it is when it gets stretched it will store your strain energy so tendon strain energy stored during joint flexion yahan pe knee ka yahan flexion ho raha hai see and it get stored here so in the next phase when it get recoil spring apne back position pe aata so automatically muscle lengthening dri uh, get driven by tendon recoil to so yahan par ye jo lengthening ho rahi hai lengthening of muscle is called सेंट्रिक कॉन्ट्रेक्शन सो यहाँ पर जो कॉन्ट्रेक्शन हो रही है लेंथनिंग ऑफ मसल हो रहा है दैट इज हैपनिंग विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस स्प्रिंग रिकॉयल अदरवाइज इफ टेंडन इज नॉट देयर देन दिस प्रोसेस विल बी वेरी हाईली एनर्जी कंज्यूमिंग बहुत ज्यादा एनर्जी आपका कंजप्शन होता नाउ दिस एनर्जी इज बींग सेव बिकॉज जो द एनर्जी विच यू रिक्वायर्ड टू डू टू डू दिस इज बींग प्रोवाइडेड बाय स्ट्रेन एनर्जी स्टोर्ड इन दिस स्प्रिंग और स्प्रिंग इज एक्लिस टेंडन so that's why it is very crucial 
to preserve your this Achilles tendon and most of the injuries in runners especially are due to more stress on this tendon so if it gets stressed if it gets stored if it gets some inf inflamed you will have a lot of problem in running because your running will become less efficient you will consume a lot of energy okay so in this way the spring effect of this Achilles tendon using stored strain energy helps you to make your running more efficient okay now I'll talk about uh, uh, in brief about a very uh, common problem due to this problem in this Achilles tendon as you most of you are runners so I, I, I'll let you know some idea about this is the problem is known as Achilles tendinitis it is very common in runners so it is corrected by dull or sharp pain anywhere along the back of the tendon calf ke niche aapke bilkul you can see here in the figure yahan par aapko bahut pain hota hai so this is the, these are the signs that you are stressing your tendon achilles tendon and it is not good biomechanically if an athlete uh, due to his wrong practices or overuse of tendon give over uh, this tendon becomes overstrained then it will lose it uh, its function and it will make your process of running very energy expensive and that will lead to decrease in your performance so uh, coaches always focus in conduct uh, in coordination biomechanics to focus on this tendon and make uh, do training so that the proper function of this tendon remains with you for the longer period of time because if tendon ko kuch problem ho jayega you will lose your game also you will lose your you know present status of running also because it is very crucial it makes your running efficient uh, another symptom is limited ankle flexibility redness burning sensation in the achilles area okay so what are the possible reasons kaun si galtiyon se runners have this excessive hill running or speed work kai athletes hills pe matlab uh, hill wala track leke they do training so excess of that is very bad for tendons achilles tendon especially both of these stress achilles tendon more than other type of running so you should you should not do hill excessive hill running to preserve your tendon function point 1 second stiff running shoes some athletes wear stiff running shoes which can force that uh, achilles to twist and that could also lead to problems and third very biomechanical reason is there over pronation the runners who over pronate are also susceptible to this disease to this disorder of your running so what is over pronation you must have heard about supination pronation pronation is when your foot is towards the earth right so some athletes by default or by due to their wrong practices or by their wrong habits tend to over pronate so that this over pronation leads to leads uh, leads to this disease or you can say this problem and this problem can uh, good morning neha neha has also joined it is good afternoon neha yeah so runners who over pronate have also chances chances it is certain they will definitely if a runner is over uh, is doing over pronation he will definitely get this problem and if you are doing hill running excess of hill running you will also you will definitely get this problem and if you are uh, using stiff running shoes then also you will have this problem so biomechanically i am saying don't do these practices to save your tendon so what is over pronation so the next slide will make you clear so what is over pronation so it is by a genetic also so if you have a uh, little bit of over pronation you can correct that by exercises so by default agar zyada problem hai then it is not curable but to, um, in many cases you can cure cure that so you can see uh, these are the four cases uh, first one is under pronation see in this you can see the ball area ball area is jahan par aapka padded area hota hai yahan pe main arrow dikha raha hu aapko this is the ball area so yahan par aapka footprint aayega so the first case is under pronation this is also not good it will lead to problems second one is the one which is desired neutral pronation you can see outer heel and broad wall wear 
वीर का मतलब है यहाँ पर आपको सोल दिखाया गया जूते का बाय सोल यू कैन गेट टू नो कि आदर यू आर ओवर प्रोनेटिंग और नॉट बॉल वियर मीन्स आपका सोल कहाँ से घिस रहा है सो इन सेकेंड केस आपका सोल यूनिफॉर्मली पूरे बॉल एरिया से घिसना चाहिए आपका जूता इफ यू हॉन्ट टू मोनिटर इट इन डायरेक्टली सो इफ यूर एंड सेकेंडली यू कैन मेक ए फुट प्रिंट ऑफ योर सेल्फ तो इस तरह का आपका अगर फुट प्रिंट फुल आता है सो ऑफ योर बॉल फर्स्ट वाले में देखिए कटा हुआ है सो वैन यू आर गेटिंग दिस काइंड ऑफ फुट प्रिंट दैट मीन्स यू हैव न्यूट्रल प्रोनेशन सो वट इज द केस ऑफ ओवर प्रोनेशन जस्ट गो टू लास्ट लाइट दिस इज स्वीयर ओवर प्रोनेशन एंड सी द फिट आर इंटरनली रोटेटेड सो वॉट हाउ द सोल विल वियर इन दिस केस टूवर्ड्स इन साइड यू सी द रेड एरिया एंड इन दिस वे दिस रनर विल डेफिनेटली हैव दैट एक्ली स्टैंड प्रॉब्लम सो दिस इज दिस लाइट विल मेक यू क्लियर दैट यू शुड नॉट ओवर प्रोनेट एंड यू कैन चेक यूर सेल्फ ऑल्सो इफ यू हैव दिस काइंड ऑफ प्रॉब्लम माइल्ड भी है तो ट्राई टू अवॉइड दिस ओके सो यू कैन प्रिजर्व यूर एक्ली स्टैंड दैट इज क्रूशल फॉर यूर रनिंग नाउ कमिंग टू द नेक्स्ट कॉन्सेप्ट कंजर्वेशन ऑफ मैकेनिकल एनर्जी now uh, as i have already told uh, already told you that energy cannot be created and it cannot be destroyed also but it transfer from one form to another now in this slide you will understand this principle of conservation of mechanical energy mechanical energy is always conserved see the ball now here we are tossing a ball into the sky so it is going up 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 it goes up to the height of 3 meters so what is happening as you toss the ball it is raising up so when it is raising what is increasing height is increasing height of the ball is increasing and when the height of the ball is increasing its potential energy will get at each instant it will get increased jaise yahan par 9.8 thi 1 meter pe at 1.5 meter it become 14.7 joules 2 meter pe 19.6 but वट इज हैपनिंग वेन इट इज मूविंग ग्रेविटेशनल एक्ट भी हो रहा है आपका ग्रेविटी भी एक्ट कर रही है सो दैट विल स्लो डाउन इट सो इसकी विलोसिटी स्लो होती जाएगी वेन इट गोज अप अल्टीमेटली एट वन पॉइंट वेन इट अटेन्स मैक्सिमम हाइट इट्स वी बिकम जीरो इट्स विलोसिटी बिकम जीरो सो दैट इज द पॉइंट इट हैज मैक्सिमम पोटेंशियल एनर्जी एंड वेन वी जीरो कनेटिक एनर्जी इज जीरो सो एट द हाइएस्ट पॉइंट it will have maximum potential energy and its kinetic energy will be zero so after that what will happen it will fall down so when it will fall down there will be increase in the velocity see as it is going down you can see the velocity is increasing and when it is moving its potential energy is going zero so in this way these convergence keep on happening in any moment and the principle which relates this is known as conservation of mechanical energy because this energy is always conserved so how you will see here in the next slide what i am saying so law of conservation of mechanical energy is it basically it is the correlation between the kinetic and potential energy okay this is one of the example the first condition for this law is that the only external force which is acting is gravity if some other force is also there then this law will not work so this is the primary condition that the only external force in an environment is gravity so in this circumstance when you toss a ball then its mechanical energy will be constant throughout this is the law of conservation of mechanical energy so when gravity is the only acting external force the body's mechanical energy is constant it always remain constant mathematically it is what i have told you earlier that mechanical energy is always sum of potential plus kinetic energy and what this law says when there is only gravity the only external force is gravity under such situation this mechanical energy will always be a constant potential energy plus kinetic energy is equal to c this is the uh, law of conservation of mechanical energy in the next slide i'll do some problem in front of you so that you can understand what i am saying for example uh, look at this problem this problem tells you that a 2 kg ball is dropped from a height of 1.5 meter 
now he's saying what is the velocity immediately before impact with the floor ek 2 kg ki ball unhone upar se niche fenki from the height of 1.5 meters you have what you have you have mass with you you have height with view and he is saying to calculate velocity immediately before the impact matlab floor ko touch karne se pehle jo energy thi you find that so how you can find that you can find with the help of this law law of conservation of energy because only external force here is gravity so what it says that when there is only external force which is gravity then mechanical energy is conserved using this principle we can calculate this velocity how you will see here so first of all what this law says that potential energy plus kinetic energy is equal to c that means it is constant so first of all you have to calculate that constant wo kaise karenge like this so pe is weight plus height that is mgh and kinetic energy is half mv square okay so when you are holding the ball at the height of 1.5 meter so that means when you are holding it it is not moving so that means kinetic energy is zero so they have put ke equal to zero but there is potential energy energy of position so that you can calculate by mgh mass is 2 kg g is your 9.1 fixed and h height is 1.5 meter so this will give you this total energy and it will be constant throughout so using this now i have got we have got constant and total energy mechanical energy is 29.43 joules now you can calculate velocity of the ball using same principle how see now we got the value of uh, constant we'll just put this pe plus ke equal to 29.43 because it will be conserved throughout this is the law says when you are when you are uh, when you are under the influence of gravity and no other force is there then your mechanical energy is conserved it will remain constant to humne pehle instant mein jab wo position pe thi we calculated the potential energy as it is constant so it is equal to c now it is falling now we'll calculate the energy velocity basically so pe plus ke is equal to 29.43 because this is conserved throughout now potential energy is mgh and kinetic is half mv square so now we'll put the values mass is 2 kg right g is 9.81 now when it will be falling height kya banegi zero ho jayegi kyunki wo strike karne wali hai to height kam ho jayegi zero hi ho jayegi so height is zero so when height is zero potential energy is zero because it is falling when it is in motion your potential energy is zero so potential energy to ho jati hai zero so what we will, uh, will be having only kinetic energy so that will be half mv square so aapka mass will be 2 kg and you have already have the constant from the initial calculation just you have to rearrange and v square equal to 2.43 when you square root that and you will get the velocity so this is the idea by which you uh, calculate the problems with the thing various thing that when you are under the influence of gravity and mechanical energy is conserved it remains constant throughout so this is the idea of uh, law of conservation of energy now uh, touching the last concept uh, of today's lecture is principle of work and energy and it is very important biomechanically because this too helps you this principle also helps you to make your movements efficient how i will uh, you will get to know in the later slide before that you understand what this principle is so this is the principle which relates your work and energy so what is work i have told you earlier work is force into distance whenever you apply force to something and it moves so this is the condition it should move so when it is moving that means force into distance you have done your work okay now this principle will relate this this work with energy with mechanical energy so how you focus on this slide so this principle relates mechanical work with mechanical energy मैकेनिक एनर्जी क्या है आई हैव टोल्ड यू कनेक्ट एनर्जी प्लस पोटेंशियल एनर्जी ओके ऑलवेज कीप दिस इन माइंड व्हेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट मैकेनिक एनर्जी इट इज सम ऑफ दोस बोथ ओके सो व्हेन देयर इज नेट फोर्स डूइंग अ वर्क ऑन एन ऑब्जेक्ट फॉर एग्जांपल आपने कोई ऑब्जेक्ट को बॉल को किक किया तो किक इज योर ऑब्जेक्ट इज बॉल सो यू आर अप्लाइंग टू अ फोर्स टू द बॉल व्हेन एवर देयर इज नेट फोर्स डूइंग वर्क ऑन ऑब्जेक्ट सो जब आपने इसको किक मारी तो बॉल मूव करेगी डिस्टेंस कवर करेगी सो दैट मीन्स यू हैव डन वर्क राइट सो वट विल हैपन इज 
एनर्जी चेंज भी होगा उसमें नाउ यू नो आई वोल यू टोल्ड यू पोटेंशियल एनर्जी कनेक्टिंग एनर्जी सो वेन इट इज एट रेस्ट इट हैज पोटेंशियल एनर्जी वेन यू केक डेट क्या हुआ इट बी इट केम इन मोशन सो पोटेंशियल एनर्जी गेट कन्वर्टेड इन टू कनेक्टिंग एनर्जी सो एनर्जी चेंज हुआ सो दिस लॉस इज वेन एवर यू डू वर्क इन ऑन ए पर्टिकुलर ऑब्जेक्ट दैट वर्क इज इक्वल टू एनर्जी चेंज और इन अदर वर्ड्स वेन एवर यू अप्लाई फोर्स अप्लाई फोर्स to any object that will lead to change in its position or it will cause a motion in it so that motion will lead to change in mechanical energy and that mechanical energy is equal to work in simple words jo bhi aapne work done energy a force lagayi hai kisi object ke upar aapne ek work kiya hai theek hai kyunki usme aapka movement hua hai this is one thing so when you do work you will also alter some energy मैकेनिकल एनर्जी चेंज होगा उसमें क्योंकि पहले वो रेस्ट पे था आपने उसको धक्का मारा पुश किया फोर्स लगाई तो आपने उसकी पोटेंशियल एनर्जी में कनेक्टिंग एनर्जी ट्रांसफर कर दी सो so, वहाँ पर मैकेनिकल एनर्जी चेंज हुआ सो दिस चेंज इन मैकेनिकल एनर्जी इज आल्सो इक्वल टू वर्क तो दिस इज आइडिया सो वेन यू डू वर्क यू डू एनर्जी चेंज एंड दैट एनर्जी चेंज मैकेनिकल एनर्जी चेंज इज इक्वल टू वर्क सो बोथ आर इक्वल दिस इज आइडिया सो वेन यू डू अ वर्क ऑन ए ऑब्जेक्ट यू बेसिकली doing a mechanical energy change on that object and that mechanical energy change is equal to work done so this is the idea so when there is a net force doing work on an object the object mechanical energy will change and this total change in mechanical energy is equal to work done so this is the idea by graphics you will become it will become more clear and mathematically it is basically sum of changes in the ener mechanical energies see delta k is change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy plus this is heat thermal energy this one is usually ignored because heat ko itna consider nahi kiya jata in biomechanics so usually we talk of kinetic energy and potential energy in some books it is always uh, also given that w equal to delta ke but in the latest thing it is it should be sum of all these three so mathematically work done is equal to total sum of changes in the energy that is change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy plus change in thermal energy thermal energy is usually heat which is involved during movements so that is usually ignored because it is very less so mainly we are dealing with kinetic and the potential energy so the total sum of changes in the forms of energy produced by a force is quantitatively equal to mechanical work done so this is the idea whenever you do work you definitely do change in the mechanical energy and that mechanical energy is equivalent to your work done so this is the idea whenever you do work you always do a mechanical change this is the universal principle and that change in mechanical energy is also equal to your work which you have which you have performed so in the biographics you will understand more uh, coming to next slide this graphic will make the things more clear what i am talking about okay so see th this is a this is an object now when it is sitting there it has potential energy okay because it is not moving potential energy is uh, is energy of your motion okay so in order to transfer energy or in order to make some change in uh, in, in its energy you have to apply force okay so in order to transfer energy to an object you should apply force so when you apply force on this teddy bear what will happen it will move okay so when it will move you have applied force so force into the movement which it for example it ek meter aage jata hai so distance kitna cover kiya 1 meter so you have done a work now this work will be equivalent to change in mechanical energy wo kaise so when you have pushed it you have transferred its potential energy into kinetic energy you have transferred kinetic energy to it because when it is moving it will have kinetic energy so this change in the energy is also equal to your work done so this is the idea so in the next slide this guy is pushing this teddy bear see you have to exert a force to that object okay so when you exert a force now it moved in the direction of force so work has been done secondly mechanical change has been also there 
earlier it was potential energy now this teddy bear is having kinetic energy so in this way now this change in mechanical energy is also equal to work done so this is the idea third slide will make it more clear so the work done is equal to change in energy or energy transferred so it is also called work done by that force so this force has moved that object it has applied force and moved that object and work has been done one thing secondly they have also uh, exerted a change in the mechanical energy earlier it was potential energy now you have added kinetic energy to that now this change in energy or this transfer of energy is also equivalent to work done so this is the principle of uh, work and energy this is the relation okay now uh, this example uh, will let uh, help you to understand more and after that i'll uh, touch one very important example of biomechanics in our athletes we do vertical jump so in that case we do we use this principle to make it more efficient so before going to that uh, i let you know this one so this is the ball machine we use in the tennis balls so before uh, they, these this ball machine basically projects the ball so that players can do practice so before projection prior to projection there will be some at some height you can see here the tub balls are placed there so they are at some height and they are resting so when it is at rest or it is at some position you have potential energy right so prior to projection the ball's potential is based on its weight and height but its kinetic energy is zero so when you project them with the help of machine you are doing you are applying force you are doing work so the ball throwing machine increases the ball's total mechanical energy by imparting kinetic energy so yahan par aapka before projection it is zero so when you apply force when you do work you are also changing mechanical uh, you are also doing change to mechanical energy how you are imparting kinetic energy to them so that they can project so in this situation change in the balls uh, thermal energy is negligible but this kinetic energy which is imparted to this ball is equivalent to work done so this is the idea so this is a general example next i'll uh, uh, discuss with you this principle in vertical jump takeoff how this principle works the idea is transfer of energy so when you are transferring energy from one to another point you are basically making the thing more efficient फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन सिंपल डर्म अगर दो मसल्स ने कॉन्ट्रैक्ट करना है राइट right? और दोनों साथ में ही हैं दे आर कनेक्टेड सम हाउ बिकॉज द मूवमेंट इज सेम सो इफ यू आर एबल टू ट्रांसफर एनर्जीज फ्रॉम वन टू अनदर जॉइंट देन द लोड ऑन द सेकेंड जॉइंट विल बी लेस लोड ऑन द सेकेंड मसल विल बी द लेस एंड दिस वे इट विल बिकम मोर एफिशियंट फॉर एग्जाम्पल वर्टिकल जम्प टेक ऑफ सो टू जॉइंट मसल्स आर इन्वॉल्व ड्यूरिंग टेक ऑफ वन इज योर एक्सटेंसर इन हिप second one is your knee both of these muscle groups helps in the extension right during take off now what is the beauty of this principle is that these the main work main energy from hip muscle will get transferred to your knee muscle this has been proved biomechanically even physiologically pura humne test kar chuke hain with the help of emg which muscle is firing or which is not and they have even able to see that ki with the help of this principle by doing work on hip joint uh, on hip muscle automatically this hip muscle transfers this energy to your knee to do to perform this take off so two joint muscles in the human body also serves to transfer mechanical energy from one joint to another so this will makes the this take off movement very efficient this reduces the mechanical work required of the muscles crossing the second joint विद हेल्प ऑफ दिस ट्रांसफर जो सेकेंड जॉइंट है आपका उसका जो वर्क लोड है वो कम हो जाएगा अदरवाइज इट विल बी वेरी एक्सपेंसिव एनर्जी एक्सपेंसिव थिंग इफ यू ऑन्ट इफ दिस प्रिंसिपल वॉज नॉट देयर वर्क एनर्जी यू नो सो ड्यूरिंग टेक ऑफ ऑफ ए वर्टिकल जम्प वैन द हिप एक्सटेंसिव वर्क वर्क कहाँ पर हो रहा है फोर्स कहाँ पर लग रही है इनिशियली हिप्स के ऊपर ड्यूरिंग द टेक ऑफ ऑफ ए वर्टिकल जम्प वैन द हिप एक्सटेंसिव वर्क कंसेंट्रिकली मीन्स contraction or a shortening of length or here to produce hip extension a secondary effect 
इज एन एक्सटेंसर टोक तो वो टोक जो है एक्सटेंसर मसल के ऊपर जो नी के पास है वहां पर पड़ेगा हाउ विद द ट्रांसफर दिस फोर्स और दिस वर्क डन इज ट्रांसफरिंग बेसिकली दैट एनर्जी टू द नी सो इन दिस केस इट इज अप एक्सटेंसर दैट प्रोड्यूस द नी एक्सटेंसर टोक सिंस द लेंथ ऑफ द रेक्टस फॉर्मेस इट हैज बीन चेक रेक्टस फॉर्मेस इज द नी एक्सटेंसर इट्स लेंथ डजन कैन चेंज बिकॉज जरूरत नहीं पड़ी वाई क्योंकि ट्रांसफर हो गया एनर्जी का फ्रॉम वेयर फ्रॉम द हिप ड्यू टू दिस वर्क एनर्जी प्रिंसिपल सो इन दिस वे दिस वर्टिकल जम्प बिकम मोर एफिशियंट बाई यूजिंग दिस प्रिंसिपल सो दिस इज द आइडिया बाई विच यू कैन यूटिलाइज दिस वर्क एनर्जी प्रिंसिपल टू मेक यूर मूवमेंट इन दिस केस इट इज वर्टिकल जम्प इट इज बिकमिंग मोर एफिशियंट बिकॉज ऑफ ट्रांसफर ऑफ एनर्जी बिकॉज द वर्क वॉज डन ओनली ऑन द हिप एक्सटेंसर मसल ग्लूटस बेसिकली ग्लूट मेजर उस पर आपका काम हो रहा है एंड दैट चेंज इन मैकेनिक एनर्जी इज बींग ट्रांसफर टू द नी एक्सटेंसर एंड इन दिस वे यू आर परफॉर्मिंग दिस टेक ऑफ अदरवाइज दिस वुड बी वेरी इंजन एनर्जी कंज्यूमिंग वर्क ओके सो इन दिस वे दिस हेल्प्स टू मेक योर मूवमेंट्स एफिशियंट सो दिस वॉज आइडिया ऑफ वर्क एनर्जी प्रिंसिपल सो इन सिंपल टर्म्स आई अगेन समराइज दिस लास्ट कॉन्सेप्ट दैट वर्क and energy are related by this work energy principle so whenever you do work you transfer some form of energy whenever you do work you make some change in the energy you transfer some energy for example when you hit an object earlier it was a rest then it gained kinetic energy so that change is equivalent to the work done so this is the idea it relates your work with your energy so hope it is clear now so this was the last concept of today's and this concludes your section a and uh, in the next uh, class we will be starting section b so that will involve different biomechanical techniques which we use so hope everything is clear and if you have any question you can comment also and you can also whatsapp me in the group also so thank you for being here and do write the answers for the uh, the questions which i have you given very simple questions so that you can understand the concepts please comment in the box thank you very much for being here i think nine people are there i think nagi sir has also joined thank you sir for being here so now i am uh, signing off thank you please comment the answers below and uh, share your experience and if you have any question that do write in the comments so i will reply accordingly okay thank you neha thank you dinesh thank you sai Okay, yeah, no problems, no problem. Hope you liked it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Narendra. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, ma'am. Okay.